46. Don't know that's the key. Let's just remain seated and enjoy this good song. Verse 1 together. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. Take time to be holy, the world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Hey, let's use the third verse, this Let's go contradictory to good Baptist and let's sing that third verse. One, two. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him, whatever be time. In joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, Still trust in his word. Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each motive beneath his control. Thus led by his spirit to fountains of love. Thou soon shall be fitted for service above. Uh, that's, uh, that's the gospel song that's following James Dobson's advice with stubborn and strong willed children. The first thing to start with is a bear hug and say, Be still, and then we'll talk. All right? So that's, that's the scripture song for that. Let's turn over to 218. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. I call this the hymn with two endings. <laughs> Verse 1 together. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Verse 2. Cast your care on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Thank you all. I figure we'll give out there. <clears throat> I'll be glad when Steve and Amy are done today for their last business convention. But then also uh, Mark drove the van today. Mark drive. And Becky's at home with Samuel. The bulletin had a couple good articles in it. I didn't read them in the morning service. Credit is what keeps you from knowing just how past broke you are. That's pretty good. America has two great energy crisis shortages, two ener great energy shortages. One is in the church on Sunday morning, and the second is in the labor force on Monday. Thought we was going to say gas and oil, didn't you? Uh, Wilds registration. I don't think I'm going to say much about it. If folks don't want to get those turned in, and there's folks that I'm I'm thinking of several in the church. Um, there's, if we don't get those in, we won't get them. There's like 38 spots left in the camp week. Um, if you will make it a 
policy of taking the high road in life, you will always have a better view of things. And then Dr. Shelton uh, Smith's statement, that was cut out of the sword of the Lord, uh, one of the messages in there. Hey, how about briefly, we enjoy a little bit about continuing on with that Bible or scriptural prayer list. If you'll turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 21, Acts 21. Let me just name another one or two and say, yeah, that's kind of fascinating. And realize, well, have you realized, we kind of think, well, that is ancient Bible times, Old Testament. But even New Testament Bible times, what do we think? Well, that's 2,000 years ago. Sometime I want to just kind of take a look at some things. How people and what they go through is not not that much different 2,000 years ago than what you have going on now. Technology may be completely different, but people's emotions, people's dealing with people, the problems they faced. Uh, so that's why the prayer requests are so, I was going to use the word pertinent. Is that a good word? Comes to mind? Why the, I could say so important, but they're so relative to our time, pertinent. Acts chapter 21, verse number 1 through 6. <clears throat> and it came to pass that after we were gotten from, from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coos, and the day following unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Patera. These, uh, you can look at your Bible missionary map in the back of Paul's journey, and you can see these little islands and little of these seaport cities still uh, in existence today. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand and sailed into Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was uh, to unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go to Jerusalem. For when we had accomplished those days, we departed, and when we had accomplished this day, we departed and went our way. And they all brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city. And we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. I'll use this portion of the scriptures. You're all somewhat familiar with the, the famous passage where Paul would suffer shipwreck. And then they'd be cast into the sea. And the ship would be broken up and they float the board or on to the shore through the currents on pieces of the ship. Where Paul, even that night, had told the fellows on the ship, be of good cheer, I've, I've had a message from the Lord, we're going to make it, but not the ship. So I'm just drawing from these one or two here to say this. The prayers and concern for people as they travel, as they travel. We say, Lord, give them traveling mercies. Do you think of the peril of sea sea journey in those days? The mystery of the seas that abounded in the myths and legends, but also not having the advanced warnings and things we know today. We can can use a GPS or what do they they call them? The Loran system or something like that. Man, we can go out to sea. We can bring up... And we can see what's happening hundreds of miles in front of us, what storm systems are coming. They had to rely a lot on the knowledge of seasons. But they even know seasons can have some really twist in them. Like this Sunday's beautiful and sunny. Last Sunday we was having a snowstorm when I, when I ran the van route down in Spanishburg. And it's cold. And, well, I had a kind of an indication because I can get on my phone and see that the weather's forecast that there's going to be flurries and it's going to be this temperature. And though they may not get it exactly right because of changes, <clears throat> um, unforeseen, Wapakoneta, Ohio, so us familiar with going up there, getting ice cream and seeing the new Armstrong, Wapakoneta had an unexpected tornado this week, killed six people. I mean, who would have thought, you know? Uh, but when you travel... You take upon you the, the hazards of traveling. These people warned, said, Paul, I don't know if you ought to be going to Jerusalem. 
you got to go through this portion at this time of the season, stuff like this. And the hazards of traveling in a ship in the Mediterranean and in those days, I can see why they gave him warning. But before they took off, they had a meeting on the shore, didn't they? What did they do? They prayed. I see an account, I guess I could turn to 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 11, desiring that they return to Jerusalem that Paul would say to pray for us. This journey is not going to be without peril. He would spell out in his testimony that in journeys often, in perils of robbers, um, I'll just, I read that you got to be especially careful at travel stops, uh, you know, the roadside ones, um, rest areas. Keep, keep watch on your children. Do things in groups. That's just the times we live, especially small children. Well, I say perils of traveling, then perils on the road. It's one thing enough, you know, that cars are going um, 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. Folks that got to get to ball games, 90 miles an hour. I just threw that out there for fun. Um, uh, folks just in a hurry, you know, got to. What's the rabbit, you know, that's all, with the one that's always in a hurry? And what, on Winnie the Pooh, hurry, 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 always in a hurry, got to hurry, hurry, hurry. Uh, that's one thing of that. But how about, how about people in distress and they're driving? How, people, how about people texting and they're driving? Oh, I don't do it. Yeah, I got it down here, you know, so that folks don't see the glow or even distracted driving, say, oh, I got it on the dash, you know, and I'm talking on the dash. And then people are in these emotional conversations on the dash. He didn't say that. Yeah, he did. Well, I'll take care of that when I get in the office. And that person's driving towards you, you know. Uh, then let alone teenagers driving. And we're getting a, a proliferation of them around here, aren't we? All these, uh, we call that inexperienced. They don't know what a hydroplaning they wouldn't know what had hit them. They don't remember that, you know, okay, the weather dropped from 50 to, to 27, but under the bridge, it freezes up quicker. So they hit the bridge full steam ahead on the gas instead of letting off the gas when it goes. And all of a sudden, the car's going. Hazards of driving. And Lord knows, hazards of flying, you know, and things like that. Every, when I see the folks in the scriptures, and Apostle Paul, I see them gathered together. Uh, I should read more of these for 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 11. I got, a f I got Romans 5, 29 right here in front of me, so since I'm close. 15, 29. And I'm sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Paul said, I'm intending to come. Pray for me. In, in journey, in perils of robbers and peril thieves. Uh, most folks wouldn't know it, but the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, Jericho is called the city of the curse from Joshua's building of it. But we do sing a song you might hear um, on the Jericho road. But sometimes we sing it, that song like that. It was called the robber's way. Because of the route and because of the little gullies and because of the hill croppings and stuff that it went through, anybody who traveled that, they would say, don't travel it alone. It's robber's way. So then Paul would say, well, I've got to come on some really perilous routes. I want to come. I'm tending to win. Pray for me. So don't think it wrong. Think, think of it. Matter of fact, quite scriptural. If your kids head back to school and are on the highway, when you're about to take a plane trip, you know, you got folks coming in for the holidays. Let us kneel on the shore and pray for traveling mercies. Okay, that's a, that's a thought I see in scriptures. Here's one at uh, first, first Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. In verse, verse number one, Jesus spake this parable on them 
men ought always to pray and not to faint, you're finding out we have a lot more current things to pray for than we thought, don't we? Um, verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, uh, of God, our Savior. I exhort you, this idea of challenging, prayers, interceding on behalf of others, and being thankful for who? For kings and those that are in authority. Now, I read in this passage, to continue, if I read on this, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. You see that in verse 2? We may... The decisions that leadership makes affects us. A lot of people will have a job or lose a job depending on who gets in office. So we pray for, Lord, give us the leaders that will help our, that'll help our men work, our ladies work. Lord, that the economy goes well. Don't you like it when the economy goes well? <laughs> Ben, you send me out that newsletter and shows that inflation on food is another 5.1% higher. Well, I would like for someone in office to make that go the other direction after how many months of that, you know? Um, so next time next time you're getting, um, uh, let's maybe say fuel, but not so much fuel, but the next time you're in there and you say, boy, I'd sure like to buy this Crisco butter so we can have some chocolate chip cookies. What? It's $8. Lord, give us a liter. <laughs> That will help me get my chocolate chip cookies. Amen. Especially senior citizens, right? Since I'm someday I'm going to join that rank. So, so think of this simple prayer a simple prayer request that is. You know, we we have peril on the streets, and I don't like the idea that people can smash and grab. <laughs> I thought when Dollar General introduced the self-checkout lines, I looked at that the first week and said, that'll never sell. They're going to cancel them already. Why? They're losing too much money. People aren't checking out their own food and registering everything. They're going to do away with them almost immediately. Why? I like to live a quiet, peaceable life where people don't break through and steal. Well, you know what? You're going to have to have a police force. So I'm going to pray for a leader who doesn't say, let's just cut the funding and get rid of police. I'm going to pray for a leader who says, we need to have good supported uh, civil servants to keep the peace. I use those by way of illustration. I'm not trying to be political or anything like that, but I'm thinking you see that there's reminders every day that if I'm going to lead a quiet and peaceable life, I'm going to need to pray for my leaders. Got some coming in. It's the van route has returned. Man, he's bringing back more with him than he than I think we took. <laughs> Handsome fellas. Uh, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. And I'm going to tell you a lot of that centers about what it says in Psalms 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. For I will bless them and that prosper thee that pray for them. Or for them. We do not comprehend. Well, I think we're getting a little bit. Aren't you glad you don't live in Haiti this morning? The cities, the, the na island nation, which our missionaries did get out, our missionaries, the bakers and others did get out, is in complete civil war. It's being run by the drug cartels. That's good news, isn't it? Can you imagine wanting to run any kind of shop in, in Haiti and you open up for business, and someone comes in and says, no, you're going to pay so much money, or you won't have any protection. It's run by the, what a dangerous place to live. I pray, thank the Lord I don't live in Haiti. I thank the Lord I don't live in Venezuela. You think 5% interest on uh, growth on food is something. How would you like to live in a country where it's going to hit 600%? People are starving. Can't afford anything. Aren't you glad you don't live in Mexico? Our missionaries just right. They just witness and try and win people to Christ. But I'm telling you what, you don't cross the path of the police, the judge, or anybody. The drug cartels run everything. Aren't you glad you don't live there? 
I'm thinking there's plenty of indications that we say that we pray for, maybe this, uh, this is the emphasis, I do need to pray for Jim Justice. I do need to pray for Joe Manchin. I do need to pray for President Biden. I do need to pray for the elections. I, Lord, I want a quiet and peaceable life. I need to pray for my leaders. That's on a national level. But that also works for ecclesiastical level, your churches. That include for, you might just say, your civil leaders that have run your local municipalities. May not know them by name, but I can sure say generally, Lord, help them make the right decisions. And then I can also pray, if they're about to make a doofus decision, Lord, stop them. <laughs> right? Pray for, anyways. A doofus is in the Greek. <laughs> and anyways, and for all men that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem makes me realize and I recognize that their conversion comes through Jesus Christ and the recognition of their Messiah. It includes that there's going to be military conflicts coming, and I, Lord, I, I pray for their safety. I pray for the Lord's rescue of the house of Israel. They may continue to live in peace. I see prayers in the scriptures, and I don't know how many of them that I should turn to. I'm not because it's five till, but I'm saying this. Do you, you recognize how many times Jesus took the food and blessed it? I did look up this morning, so I had a good working definition of how the word blessed is used. And it has several. You've got you to distinguish the importance of when it's used as a noun and when it's a verb. You know, a verb is an action, you know, and a noun is a name, a person, place, and thing. And so there's places in the scriptures where it's used as a verb, where when it's a blessing, it's the idea and in an action to consecrate it, to make it holy, to make it special. And in that use and to be grateful for it. Uh, is, is all part of it. They recognized Jesus, the Emmaus disciples. You know, though he walked them, I always find it a mystery that Jesus could walk to Mary to others in his glorified body. And there's that, and then, then there was that, like they couldn't know him. They didn't know him. They didn't recognize him. Mary till he spoke. Mary and then the Emmaus disciples. Why? Because the last they seen him, he was crucified, and now this one walking with him is alive and well and healthy. So they wouldn't relate that that this this was the same one that on the cross. But when he broke the bread and blessed it, they knew it was him. There's something distinguishing about people being grateful for their food, and in an action expressing that gratitude that God would make that this is give us this day our daily bread and then the Bible goes on to say in the passages is oh I had several written there you might oh not on not a piece of paper with everything with prayer supplication with thanksgiving so if God gives it to you God blesses you with it we ought to at least be the leper who goes back and shows gratitude for what God's done for us. Amen. Uh, since we're asking for it, my, my little illustration is, you know, we're trying to raise our kids upright. We're trying to make them show respect and kindness. I say this even with us when raising our kids. If an adult's speaking to you, stop what you're doing, look at them, hear what they're saying, and say yes ma'am or no ma'am, you know. But stop, look, and show respect. If they give you anything, do you realize how often you have to do this? What do you say? Oh, thanks. Let's not be the ones where God says, and what do you say? Wouldn't that happen this past week when I said, well, I at least thought he would have said thank you, you know, you know. Uh, going to stop and help somebody, you'd at least think they'd say thanks, right? Um, let's not be that. I see in the scriptures people show up with thanksgiving. Uh, let your request be made known on God. That one even prefaced it with it. Start with gratitude. Prayers. Romans chapter 1. What people prayed for in the scriptures, without me going through all the scriptures, Praying for your leaders. Praying for traveling mercies. Praying, thanking God for his provisions. 
blessing it. Romans chapter 1. Just going to read. Verse 8. First I thank my God through Jesus Christ. For you all. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Somewhere along the line in Apostle Paul's prayers, he's saying, Dear God, thank you for them folks at Rome. Now we're going to see in verse 16, chapter 16, he calls them by name. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. He mentions them in his prayers and he's thanking God for them. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 4, he does the same, praying for the church, the people at Corinth. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 16, he's doing the same. I'm praying God and thanking God for you folks at Ephesus. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 2, guess what? Church at Thessalonica, I thank God for you folks and I'm praying for you. There's appreciation for the church family, especially as it increases in, in the love and the first love which it had at Ephesus. It's a natural connection, not just from us to the head. Christ is the head of the body. And ye are members in particular. I'm not only just thinking, speaking to the head, but in speaking to the head, my concern is that everybody that's in this body with me. We have found out in 1 Corinthians, as far as being members set uniquely as he will in the body, and gifted with different gifts. We're not all the same. But we have all the same concern. The welfare of the body. And when one member suffers. We all suffer with it. And so we smash this thumb. We don't say well this one's alright. <laughs> we smash that toe. And we say well 99% of the body's still doing well. No we, we get concerned about the one that's hurt. And so I realize with those, those just simple analogies. That are given in the scriptures. Paul is praying that there's a church at Rome. That's going to see severe persecution. He remembers them in prayer. He remembers those of the poverty of the Macedonia. And in their deep poverty gave liberally. But he remembers them in prayer. He knows that the church at Jerusalem. Will suffer the first wave of persecution. And how other churches will take up offering to help those folks. Why? They're remembering the ones that are hurting. And the ones in need. So as much as possible, when you have a prayer list with people's names on it, in your mind, in your heart, on paper, whatever it is, that's a scriptural prayer list. You're praying for people. You're praying for other members of the body of Christ. Then, of course, if I was going to say things that all the prayer list for traveling mercies, for leadership in different levels and places of leadership, for Jerusalem and the peace of Jerusalem and what that entails. And praying with gratitude and praying for people. I see in the scriptures the necessity for the prayer of forgiveness. When he says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those that are indebted to us. Forgive us our sins. Matthew's, Matthew's gospel, forgive us our trespasses. If we was going to say if any man lack wisdom, we would probably all say, yeah, well, I lack some wisdom. But if we'd also include this, if any of you needs forgiveness once in a while, I'm going to throw this out. Yeah, I need that too. The Bible says, 1 John 1, verse 7, we could sing it, couldn't we? I don't, we don't use those old church for um, uh, campus crusade songs for Christ. Uh, Christ is all I need, Christ is all I need. But the other one, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we a fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Sing it again, if we walk. Um, the, those courses, because we all need forgiveness. And after verse 7, he says, If any man sin, say he sin not, he's a liar. Ooh, so I know. That everyone needs this prayer. Verse 9. If we confess our sins. 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just as human to human relationships rely on for, to keep a good relationship every once in a while, a good old fashioned apology. If I was going to preach any longer on that and say, making an apology without a but attached to it. I'm sorry for the way I reacted, but that means you're going to blame it on them, so just leave that off. <laughs> right? This wouldn't have happened, you know. I sincerely wasn't going to do that, but here comes the excuse. So sometimes it just needs to be, I'm sorry. This one's on me. Amen? And sometimes to God, it just needs to be a good old fashioned confession of sin. And he says he's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and wipe the slate clean. All right, let's go from here. That one's done. We'll put that behind us. How far behind us? Oh, that's another subject. How about from east to west and deepest part of the sea? You know, that's another subject. There's four places in scriptures what God does with our sin, and you're going to like all four of them. So let's come with, say, dear Father, a confession of sins. That's a prayer because we all need it. I believe as we look at the scriptures, men ought always to pray. Why? Because, listen, we all need wisdom. We all need boldness. We could all use health, or if not us, someone we know. We're all going to travel in a perilous world. We all want to have peace and live comfortably. Uh, we, all would like, we all like the expression of gratitude from a little kid on up. And every once in a while, well, we're all going to eat and have daily needs. We ought to be thankful for it. And men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't quit because we're all going to need a good cleansing every once in a while. Amen? Bible prayer list. All through it, you see from the example prayer the Lord gave, you see people using it. Let's close with a word of prayer. Ask the Lord's blessings on another Lord day. Dear Father, thank you for this Sunday. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord and hear the eternal words again. If we'd hear Jesus teach them again, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And when you come, will you find us continuing to do so? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you.